Hello learners, welcome to NOI studio. Today we are going to discuss advanced communication at workplace. As you know, communication is largely dependent on language and language is dependent on speech and speech in general is made up of several sounds and these sounds are produced by the oral or speech mechanism uh, via the, um, the vocal tract, the oral tract and the nasal tract, right? Today, we are going to look at the speech patterns in English which are represented through the IPA or the International Phonetic Alphabets, right? Our objectives today are to identify consonants and vowel sounds which are part of the IPA or the International Phonetic Alphabet. Okay, we also are going to define syllable. We are going to describe listening and types of listening and explain lastly telephone etiquettes as well as group discussions. Now first let's come to consonants and vowel sounds. Uh, for that we'll have to understand the speech mechanism. The speech mechanism as you know is made up of the vocal tract which is uh, you know largely responsible for uh, allowing the air that is in the lungs to pass through the larynx and the pharynx and then it enters the vocal um, the oral cavity right from and therefore we are first going to look at the consonants all right what are consonant sounds consonant sounds are those which are produced when there is a partial or complete interruption of the flow of the air by one of the speech organs also called articulators that is tongue teeth lips heart palate alveolar ridge soft palate uvula velum and the larynx right so if you uh, look at it the if you want to produce a consonant sound you will have you will see that when the air that is pressed from the lungs and passes through the vocal tract uh, reaches the oval, oval tract there is some obstruction there is some stoppage by the tongue or the teeth or the lips the heart palate alveolar ridge soft palate uvula velum and the larynx now look at the characteristics of the consonant sounds these sounds are typically short and abrupt when used in speech for example p b t d s sh j these sounds are and many other many more right so these sounds are relatively sharper as compared to other sounds let's look at the consonant chart the first sound is p as in pot as you can see it is a bilabial it's produced when the lips come together let's look at the consonant sounds p as in pot b as in bat t as in table d as in dog and this particular symbol as you can see is slightly complicated it is ch 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 as in church charm this symbol denotes ch the ch sound as in church charm check now why do we use the symbol in this manner because as you can see ch can be denoted through several other sounds like ch right so one is which can be again uh, pronounced as sh as in chef or k as in chemist therefore there is this particular symbol in the ipa which denotes only the ch sound ch the next sound is j j j as in judge jar jam again as you notice that there could be some confusion when you write the j sound it can be denoted in english by j by this alf alphabet j all right and also by the alphabet g right as for example you can say george and there you use the alphabet g and for judge you use j therefore to avoid confusion we use this particular symbol 
in the IPA which denotes only the J sound. Therefore, J as in judge, jar, jump, jam and likewise. K sound, K again, this particular symbol denotes only the K sound which sometimes in English is denoted through CH like chemist, right? CH can be used for chemist and therefore this particular or for that matter uh, by C as in cake, all right? The next sound is the K sound. Here again you notice that this is the sound which is used only when we produce the sound k, right? As in, and uh, why do we use this symbol? Mainly because k sound can be, you know, represented by ch as in chemist and c as in cake, right? So here we notice that we can avoid this confusion in phonetics by using just K. K as in kite, K as in Kate, K as in cake, K as in chemist. The next sound is G. As pointed out to you earlier, there could be some confusion between G and J and therefore this particular sound stands only for the sound G as in game, go, grow. The next sound is F. F again, in order to avoid confusion, sometimes PH is pronounced as F, right? As in phony, phone, phonetics. But if you want to use the IPA and if you want to use the sound F, then you will use this particular symbol and it stands only for the F sound. F as in phone, f as in friend, f as in for or force, etc. Let's go to the next sound, w as in van. It's different, say, from water or watch, which is again a w sound, but this is basically a sound where you find that it is labiodental, that is v, v as in van, vas. Next sound is looks very interesting. It is th, th, th as in theta, you know, the th as in again. Why do we use this particular symbol again to avoid confusion in pronunciation? Because th could be the, th could also be th as in thing, thank you. You use th, then you again use for th for then, that, there. Therefore, to avoid such confusion, there is this particular symbol th, th, as in thought, thing, thank you. The next is again the sound. Here again, the same logic. That is, in order to avoid confusion, because we use the sound the, which can be confused with the sound th. Therefore, we use a particular symbol, this particular symbol, to denote only the the sound as in the, their, though, them, they, theirs, etc. The next sound is s, s as in snake, so, sorrow, sorry, etc. Then the z sound here we find a lot of you know confusion here because it sometimes there since there is a mother tongue influence or there is a first language influence people do make mistake and they somehow uh, are unable to pronounce it as it should be that is the z sound as in zero uh, it is to be pronounced as zero zoom zebra etc the next sound is sh you can see that it is a very, uh, it would be new to you, sh. The same logic is used again here because sh could mean so many, sh, 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 as in ship, she, shape. Sometimes ch is used first to produce the sound sh, as in chef, chemise, shins. 
Therefore, to avoid such confusion, we use this particular symbol to denote the sh sound. Sh as in ship, shape, shame, shoes, etc. Then we have this particular sound that is zh, zh as in leisure, pleasure, measure, right? It should not be confused with z. Sometimes we tend to confuse these two sounds. We say leisure, pleasure, measure, or we say measure, leisure, treasure, which again is a mispronounced sound. Therefore, this sound is to be pronounced as zh, zh, as in measure, leisure, treasure, pleasure, etc. Then we have the nasal sounds. M, N, M, right? So here you can see M as in man, mouse, many, N as in nest, no, never, note, etc. And this other sound is a combination of N and G. As we say, we don't ever say song or long or morning. As you can see, it's very difficult to pronounce the ending with G. Therefore, we tend to, uh, you know, soften our endings by saying morning, song, long. We never say long, song, or morning, singing, right, longing. It is very difficult to say the ending and anyway, it sounds rather uh, odd. Therefore, if you again, if you are pronouncing it in this manner, then again you can very well see that there is this mother tongue influence or the uh, first language influence, and therefore it one should hear it very carefully and see that we are able to pronounce it the way it should be. That is long. It's a combination of n and g where both the sounds are softened or combined. Long, song, longing, morning going, where you don't say ing very in a pronounced manner, you soften the ending of it, longing, morning, good morning, song, long, prong, etc. Then the next sound is her, her as in horse, here, hover, hair, the next sound is l as in low, Level, lamp, lamb, etc. Then the next sound is r, as in ran, run, roll, etc. And next, the sound that we are going to learn is w. It's a rounded, almost a semi-vowel, and you can see that we don't pronounce it the way we pronounce w, but we say watch. It's slightly, as you can see, it's a rounded sound. Watch. Water, where, why, etc. And the NAS. Here, as you can see, the J symbol it actually stands for year. Year as in yes, yam, yacht, yesterday. So these were the consonant sounds. As you can see, these are produced when there is an obstruction or a stoppage of the air passage. Uh, by the tongue, teeth, lips, nasal cavity, and hard palate, soft palate, etc. Right? Let's look at the vowel sounds now. Vowel sounds are those sounds which are produced without any barrier or stoppage of the air passage, which is being, which is passing through your vocal tract. Right? You can perhaps differentiate between one vowel sound and the other by the shape of the mouth, by the lowering and the closing or the spreading of your lips, right? So let's look at some of the long vowels and the short vowels in IPA. The IPA symbol for a short vowel sound for E is E as in tip, E as in pet, uh, A as in ant, act, actor. Right, it's a very interesting symbol as you can see. Slightly, uh, it's a combination of a and e, a, a, 
Right, let's go over it again. E as in tip, A as in pet, A as in ant, A as in cup, O as in honk, all honk, honk. Then let's look at a shorter sound as U as in pull, put, book, um, two. The next sound short sound is the schwa sound a uh, which is not shown over here but it's actually an inverted e right so you have a uh, as in ago it comes towards the end of most of the words which are ending with er as in teacher water sharper mother sister brother water etc let's look at the long vowels in ipa the symbol for long vowels is E, as in cheese, beat, meat, seat, as opposed to say the short vowels as in sit, you can use the longer vowel and you can look at it as sit and seat, E, E as in seat, then R as in arm, arm. A L M and A R M, right? For both you can use R or towards the end as star, far, car. The next sound is O. What do you do? You don't really pronounce. Are you noticing that you're not pronouncing the R sound very prominently? You are just prolonging that particular vowel sound like force, force. Full force, you don't say full force, force, or you don't say let me fill my form. Instead, you say let me fill my form, form. I am going to join the force. You must use the full force, right? Then let's go on to the next that is oo as in platoon, boon, shoe, blue. True. The next sound is again a uh, elongated sound, and you can see that here again the R is not really pronounced very prominently. In fact, you just prolong or you just elongate the vowel sound. For example, you say shirt, you don't say shirt, shirt. See how different it sounds. You say shirt, curd. Burn, birth, bird, etc. Let's now look at the diphthongs. What are the diphthongs? Diphthongs are a combination of vowel sounds, right? So you look at these combinations and they are eight in number by and large. So they combine these two vowel sounds. For example, a, a as in Pain, 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 not pain, not simple pain or pen, but a, a, the sound a and i as in pain, pain, then i, i as in i as yourself, eyes as your eyes, i as in by, tie. Sky, lie, lies, ties, buys, etc. Then you have the other vowel sound, oi. Oi, oi, as in oil, ointment, ointment. Uh, well, boy, toy, toil, etc. Then you have the other sound which is not indicated over here, but it's a combination of O and O as in stone, O, stone, stone, stone. Then O, the combination of A and O, scowl, owl, bow, B-O-U-G-H, that is now, house, mouse, ow, ow. The next sound is ear 
as we say in English IPA, ear, 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 a combination of e and a, ear, as in beer, beer, do not mistake it with air, as in b-e-a-r, bear, bear, the animal bear, the feeling that you cannot bear, b-e-a-r, bear, all right? So, you must be careful, you should not uh, pronounce it as B, if B E A R is given to you, do not pronounce it as beer because there is a different sound altogether. It's air, air, whereas this sound over here is ear, ear, E and a, ear, ear, as in beer, beer. The next sound is air, that, which I was coming to, air, as in stair, bear, B A R E, B E A R. Tear, T E A R, tear, bear, bear, right? So then let's look at the other, and that is oo, 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 and a, oo as in tour, poor, sure. Surely you know the sound oo, tour, oo, poor. We have so far studied the consonants, the vowels and the diphthongs. Let's look now at the word stress rules. Uh, once we have studied the components of speech sounds, that is consonants, vowels and diphthongs, these go to form words and words have stress rules. Now let's study the stress rules. One word has only one stress. We can stress only the vowel sounds, not consonants. What are these words that we stress? What are these sounds that we stress? These sounds are always a vowel sound, right? Therefore, we, these vowel sounds are known as syllables, right? So when we, look at, uh, when we look at the definition of the syllable, let's study what is a syllable then. It is a unit of pronunciation that is made up of one or more than one sounds. Let's study then what's a syllable. A syllable is a unit of pronunciation that is made up of one or more than one sound. This sound can only be a vowel sound, can only have one vowel sound. It may have one or more than one consonant sound. Every word has at least one syllable. Then we have to also look at it, how we stress these syllables. Let's study the syllabic stress. Why do we need a stress on a word mainly because we need to use clear speech. A stressed syllable would generally have the following features, pitch, that is how high or low can we raise our voice, length, how elongated it is and loudness, what is the volume of it. Now what is the need for syllabic stress? Basically we need syllabic stress for correct pronunciation, for clarity of speech, for correct meaning, for maintaining the rhythm and music of the language and for the listener's perception. Let's now discuss the principles of listening. Why should we be paying attention to this? When we are articulating, we have to see to it that we are able to communicate our ideas to others and that they should also be in a position to uh, understand what we are trying to say. And therefore, when the same is applied to us, we should also remember that for good communication, you definitely need, a, you definitely repeat. Therefore, we must realize that for good communication at workplace or elsewhere, we need to be good listeners. If we do not listen properly, and that is the first and the most important principle of communication, to be able to listen what the other person is saying. For that, we ought to look at some of the principles of listening. The first one is when somebody is speaking to you, you should stop talking and pay attention to what that person is saying, right? Then. When we are listening to somebody else, that particular person would be 
may be slightly different, may be hesitant, and it is important then for us to put the speaker at ease. The person should be in his comfort zone. He should be able to speak because he thinks or he or she is, you know, uh, hope all the time uh, hoping that you will be giving him or her your undivided attention. Therefore, for that, you have to remove all distractions that come in the way. Distractions could be noise, could be, um, you know, distance, could be uh, faulty tech, uh, technical equipments. Also, apart from all these external um, paraphernalia, we also have to remember that we ought to empathize. Empathize is that we should be able to put ourselves in the speaker's position. And you would definitely hate if people are not paying attention to you if you're speaking and therefore you can very well understand what happens to a person who's speaking and realizes that nobody is listening to him or her. And therefore it's very, very important to be able to put the person not only at ease but also to be able to listen with great sympathy, to be able to listen to that particular person without any prejudice and to be able to make him or her feel comfortable. For that, we need to exercise patience. Therefore, we have to be patient when we are listening to someone. It is very imp imperative that we pay attention and we are not in a hurry for the other person to stop speaking or to finish his or her speech. And therefore, one has to exercise patience. Now, when we uh, look at someone speak to you, uh, we have to see to it that we, through our body language, make that person realize that we are quite willing to listen to that particular person. Therefore, one ought to exercise a great deal of patience. Another important aspect is that we should avoid personal prejudice. Sometimes we make up our mind, we say, oh, what can this person speak? It's definitely he or she is going to speak nonsense. But sometimes you'll realize that it is actually the result of your personal prejudice. You've already made up your mind. Therefore, do have an, you know, a very, very um, unprejudiced mind. Give the other person that particular scope so that he or she is able to communicate to you. Now, do also listen to the tone. It's very important to listen to the tone because then you will be able to make out or you will be able to realize uh, what that particular person is trying to say because sometimes even if the words are not clear, the tone tells you a great deal. Now, listen for ideas, not just words. What do you mean by that? Sometimes we have so many words, we are so verbose as people point, would point out to you. You use, you've, you've learned up your dictionary well or that other person has learned up you know, a lot many words and sometimes you are using words just for the sake of it. Therefore, it's very, very important for you to look for ideas hidden behind those words, right? So, ideas, look for the central idea, look for what the person is trying to say and not just get fascinated by the words that particular person is using. Now, also wait for and watch for non-verbal communication. That is mainly eye contact, body language, uh, politeness in your speech, non-aggression. All that also communicates a great deal and makes you, if you are paying attention fully, you will notice all these aspects and you would be able to listen in a better manner. Now there are types and types of listening. Let's look at it, discriminative listening, comprehension listening, critical listening, selective listening, and active listening. All these activities, all these types of listening, that is, will teach you how to listen with greater care, paying attention, discriminative listening, where you're paying great deal of attention to the ideas, comprehension listening, 
when you are able to comprehend, understand what that other person is trying to say. Critical listening, when you are able to discern critically what the person's ideas are about and you are able to somehow um, analyze that what that particular person is trying to say. Selective listening, you may listen to that which interests you. And active listening, when you are completely, uh, uh, you know, geared to listen very, very uh, effectively, attentively to all that is saying, and that would be, uh, that would comprise all the above mentioned points. And effective listening becomes very, very important when you are learning telephone etiquettes. What are telephone etiquettes? What are telephone etiquettes? Telephone etiquettes are those which make you a good listener as well as a good speaker, right? You are able to uh, somehow communicate your ideas, get your message down and communicate your message as well as take down messages that are being communicated to you. When you get a call or when you make a call, always identify yourself at the beginning of all calls, whether you are making it or receiving it. When you receive, you can say, well, this is so and so speaking on this side. Be sensitive to the tone of your voice. You cannot shout your message down. You cannot use an aggressive, impolite tone. You can be sure that the person on the other side will either put down your phone and will stop communicating with you. Think and discuss before you place a call, especially when you are making an official call or even if you are making a personal call, it is very important for you to already make up your mind as to what you are going to speak so that you are able to avoid confusion both sides. You are able to communicate your ideas with great clarity and lucidity. You are able to communicate your ideas in less time. You are able to save time. Therefore, think and discuss before you place a call. You must prepare beforehand what you are going to say, what your basic message is, who are you speaking to and what do you think would be prob probably the response. So be ready with a pen or paper or with, your, uh, with all your equipments intact. Do not allow interruptions to occur during conversation. Do not allow somebody else to interrupt you while you are making a call. Do not be occupied with something else when you are making a call. Therefore, these are the etiquettes which will make you a better uh, communicator, uh, especially when you are leaving messages, speak clearly and slowly so that the other person on the other side is able to take down or is able to imbibe what you are trying to say. Therefore, clarity is very, very important. Also, you should be speaking slowly so that your message is conveyed clear and loud. Build the habit of always turning off your cell phone ringer. Always speak into the telephone receiver with an even and low tone of voice. Do not shout as I said, do not use a sharp tone because it is quite likely that your message firstly will not be conveyed at all, secondly in all likelihood the person is going to bang down the phone. Therefore, always speak into the telephone receiver with an even and low tone of voice. Do not lower your voice, but definitely use a tone which is polite, which is pleasant, which is friendly, which is not aggressive and not impolite, definitely. Do not allow yourself to be distracted by other activities. You shouldn't be making tea for yourself while you are making an official call or playing your on your mobile while you are communicating your message to somebody else. Then, display of communication skills through knowledge of ideas regarding the subject is also very, very important. What do you mean by that? What do you understand by that? That is, you should know already what you are trying to speak. Your ideas should be clear to yourself. Only then will you be able to communicate your ideas clearly. And therefore, your communication skills are really very dependent on your knowledge of the ideas regarding a particular subject that you are taking up to communicate. 
you must also exhibit leadership qualities. If the other person is not able to follow, then think of other ways of initiating the conversation, think of other ways of communicating. And a good leader is one who is able to communicate in many ways. And therefore, you would be exhibiting your leadership qualities when you are able to communicate effectively. Less after telephone etiquettes, less come to group discussion. In a group discussion, you have a team of people sitting with you and you are supposed to display your communication skills there. Now, you would be able to communicate well if you are able to display your communication skills through knowledge of ideas regarding the subject. For that, you should, have to pre you should prepare beforehand. You should have a thorough knowledge of the subject you are going to speak on or speak about. Also, for that, you need to do your research well, you need to do your homework well. So when you are taking part in group discussion, see that you are confident about the subject you are going to speak about or on. Then in a group discussion, you also require to exhibit your leadership qualities. What are these leadership qualities? These are when you initiate the discussion, you are able to not only initiate but carry forward your argument in a well-argued manner. In a group discussion, you have enough scope to exhibit your leadership qualities. What do you mean by leadership qualities? These are qualities which make you very prominent among your team members. When you exhibit leadership qualities, people look up to you for direction, for guidance. When you, uh, if you have those leadership qualities, you would be the one who would be initiating discussions, carrying forward the discussion that is there. You would be able to speak with confidence. You will be able to offer several out-of-box solutions. And for that, you need to have a positive and cooperative attitude approach towards other candidates in the group. Apart from initiating the discussion, you should see that your team members are able to participate. Somebody who is diffident should be given a chance. Your cooperative and positive attitude will help other members to come out with better ideas and you will have enough input for your project. Then you should be able to address the group as a whole, not speak to individuals, but rather you should be able to address the whole group so that everyone feels that you are, uh, you know, you are able to, you are communicating to all of them and not to only one person. So do not direct your argument or your uh, proposition only towards one person, but do address the group as a whole. Ability to stand up to physical and mental stresses and difficulties is also a part of group discussion. You should be able to not only uh, you know, physically stand uh, the long hours of discussions and the mental stresses and difficulties which sometimes may crop up while you are discussing with other members. Not many people would agree with you and therefore how to, how to agree, how to, um, well, how to politely uh, disagree and not offend people and to be able to bear mental stresses and difficulties. That is, sometimes there is no solution at hand, sometimes the problem is too complex and therefore you would need all your energies and all your abilities to come to your help. You should be able to stand or to overcome these physical and mental stresses. Well, Towards the end of the lecture, let's see what have you learned so far. We have been able so far to identify consonants and vowel sounds in IPA. Also, we have discussed diphthongs. We have also discussed stress and syllables. We have also discussed listening and types of listening. We have also described listening and types of listening. We have also explained telephone etiquettes as well as group discussion. I hope you enjoyed the lecture. Thank you.